then our actions will bring bad results and create harm. If our thoughts are based on generos, dash, I2Y, compassion, and avoiding clinging, then our actions will bring good results. Thoughts that are based in loving kindness and goodwill, that are free from the desire or intention to cause harm, led us to act in a beneficial manner. There may be times when we don't necessarily want to act in a beneficial manner. We may know the right thing to do, but just don't want to do it. It's in these moments we can focus on our intention. May, dash, you who aren't ready to do the difficult thing, to quit a certain behavior, to set a boundary, or forgive someone for whom you hold a resentment. But we can set the intention to do so, and investigate our willingness in meditation by repeating statements like, May I have the willingness to forgive. May I have the willingness to quit smoking or skip that piece of cake or stay off the internet tonight, etc. Ellipsis dot. May I have the willing dash. Yes to make amends to my partner. The first choice we can make in wise intention is that of generosity. Dot. Generosity teaches us how to let go of our self-centeredness. To let go of clinging to ideas of mine and me. Selfishness, or self-centeredness, is one of the ways we justify and cling to our addictive behaviors. Generosity comes from the awareness that we're holding on too tightly to our selfishness. The karmic result of looking at the world only through the lens of me and mine and what I want leads to loneliness, sipa, dash, ration, and dissatisfaction. Letting go of this cleaning can be the solution. Letting go of me and mine does not mean you need to stop acting all. Dash. Edging your social identities within your community. Without generosity, the mind is confined to a small, tight space. Anything that's not about, me and mine, is off limits. At times in our lives when we become dependent, our world becomes focused on sad. Dash. Is finding our cravings. I'm holding on to what we want right now. We get sucked into the reactivity of survival mode, believing that we must have our addictive substance or behavior to survive. Our needs for relief or pleasure consume us, and we become blind to the needs of those around us. We may even begin to see them as threats. We can break out of this cycle by opening our hearts, by being present for a new service to other people. Generosity allows space to read, dash, spawn to those around us, to improve their well-being in our choices. This can, of course, be a tricky concept for those of us who struggle with issues. Of codependency, generosity does not mean giving of ourselves without boundaries until we are depleted. It does not mean using, helping, as a form of manipulation to get what we want. Again, what's important here is that we're honest about the intention behind our actions. We try not to confuse intent with impact. Our intention may be to not harm, but sometimes the impact is that someone feels hurt. Many of us have experienced this in our addictions. Without intending 
too, and often without even being aware of it, we've created harm in other people's lives. The way we choose to practice compassion and recovery is by being accountable when our actions hurt someone, and by acknow. Dash. Edging this hurt without blame or shame, defensiveness or justification. This includes when we offend someone by inadvertently using unwise speech or actions in regards to their social identity, such as race or gender. In these moments, it is important to recognize the difference between intent and impact and having a deep appreciation and compassion for the interconnectedness among us all. Generosity allows us to cultivate appreciative joy, which is first of the four heart practices of Buddhism, along with compassion, love, dash, in kindness, and equanimity. Joyful appreciation is simply being half, dash, P.Y. when somebody else has good fortune, happiness, and peacefulness. Generosity lets us appreciate the happiness of others rather than having feelings of envy, jealousy, or wanting them to be just a bit less happy so. We seem a little happier by comparison. We want the other person's half, dash, finesse to increase, for them to become more at peace, and so we learn to appreciate those things in their lives. In the moment of giving, of Jenner, dash, as a tea, we've let go of self-centered desire and grasping what is, mourning, or what brings me pleasure. We're giving up any ill will or aversion we feel toward the person and toward the world. Instead of creating separation and withdrawal, we're actively fostering appreciation for the closeness and connectedness of the world. This is a joy that's not obstructed by selfish desires, envy, or re dash, sentiment. It's the purity of happiness for someone else's good fortune. We can choose to cultivate this feeling of joy in the happiness and success of others, without the need to compete or compare. It's actually a feeling that's natural to humans, but it's often neglected when our attention is focused on selfish craving. This is the true seed of generosity, delighting in the happiness of others, without needing anything in return. The second heart practice is compassion, which is first of all a will, dash, aimless to come close to pain, to recognize it, honor it, acknowledge it, and respond to it wisely. This isn't easy, because just as we want to run from or suppress our own pain, we also learn to avoid being with the pain of others. Compassion means sitting with our own pain and that of others. It stops the cruelty of indifference. Compassion for ourselves is crucial. Self-compassion is the key to healing the shame and guilt that we often feel as we begin to recognize the harms we cause through our addictions. You may also find that compassion is difficult to realize when it comes Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.